This is ME370 at Portland State University. Lecture 4, Introduction to Intellectual Property. This is part two of the lecture. We're going to be talking about patents. So the question is, where are patents first mentioned in U.S. law? Where does that come from? Here's a hint. It's the Constitution. Article 1 of the Constitution, Section 8, enumerates the powers of Congress. And in particular, relative to patents, there's a section that says, to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. A patent, then, comes from that uh, basic part of the Constitution. The uh, United States Patent and Trademark Office uh, defines it this way. It's an intellectual property right. IP, intellectual property, is, is expressed in terms of rights. And the right is to exclude others from making, using, or offering for sale. That's very important. We think of property as ownership, but here we have ownership of the right, and the right is to exclude or prevent. Finally, it says, for a limited time in exchange for public disclosure of the invention. That's a key idea as well. When you get a patent, you are given the right to prevent other people from using your idea, and that right exists for only 20 years. That's the limited time. And you have to tell everybody else what your invention is. Here's a cartoon that sort of gives the justification for patents. You have a good idea. You invest money and time, and with that you produce an innovative device or process. So the idea is the beginning, and then you invest in it. The innovative device or process, you would hope, turns into something of value to you that you can then sell. So the idea becomes a device or process, and that device or process becomes something you can sell. The idea of a patent, then, is that the feedback from the sales to the idea process is yours. In other words, the patent is designed to protect that feedback, because if you had the idea, produce the innovative device or process, and then someone else could copy it, how would you be rewarded for the investment you made up, up, up front? So the government has an interest in protecting the creation of ideas because it represents an investment that then benefits the economy. And if that investment is not rewarded, there presumably would be less of it. So that's the theory of why we have patents. There are three types of patents, utility patents, design patents, and plant patents. We will focus on utility patents because those are used to protect inventions. Utility patents come in two types, provisional and non-provisional, which we'll talk about. Plat patents also are provisional and non-provisional. Here's an interesting fact. In 2012, the United States Postal and Trademark Office received about 609,000 patent applications. That's all types, utility, design, and plant. 609,000 applications. 571,000 of those were utility patents. So 609,000 applications a year is 11,000 per week, 2,300 43 per day. 2,300 patent applications are received per day. In fact, there's now more of those. Let's talk about utility patents. And again, there are two types of utility patents, provisional and non-provisional. A provisional patent allows you one year to fill out the complete filing. So a non-provisional patent application is the complete filing. If you have an idea, you want to start producing something based on that idea, and you want the 
invention protected by intellectual property. In other words, you want to you have the idea and you want to prevent other people from manufacturing and selling that product, device, material, whatever. A provisional patent gives you a one-year window to complete the full patent application and you can not you don't have a patent number but you can write patent pending so the provisional patent allows you to quickly bring your idea to market it's also a lot cheaper so the initial investment is much less but you need to get a non-provisional patent anyway so the full cost is yet to be born but it allows you to get the patent protection sooner and thereby allowing you to use and disclose this idea to the public. The non-provisional patent requires a much more complete application. This is on the order of ten to $20,000 in today's dollars for the legal work and uh, paperwork creation necessary to get a non-provisional patent. When you submit or file the patent application, you've essentially disclosed the idea to the public. So that marks the date of your disclosure, and that begins the examination process by the United States Patent and Trademark Office. So you're not granted a patent when you apply. You've simply disclosed it by applying, and the 20-year life of your patent begins at that time.